We're here today with Wharton Operation Information and Decisions Professor Hami Song to talk to her about some of her latest research. Hami, thanks for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. So first, can you give us a short summary of this research? So, so my work is in healthcare operations, and what I'm focusing on is thinking about how we can design systems and processes that will enable physicians to work more productively. Um, this particular paper, I'm focusing on queue management systems, thinking about how can we better design this queue management system to enable physicians to be more productive. So first, what do I mean by queue management? Um, so this is thinking about the kinds of, you know, think about a line that you waited in this morning, let's say. Um, we we encounter these things all over the place, and we're trying to think about different ways of structuring them. So in this particular case, it's a queue structure, thinking about what kinds of implications that has for productivity outcomes that we're interested in. In this kind of a healthcare setting, we're thinking about the length of stay of the patients, the waiting times of the patients, and as we'll get to talk about, um, this particular paper we're thinking about in an emergency department setting. So these are patients in the waiting room of an emergency department, thinking about how you should design those cues as they wait to be seen by a physician. So you can naturally think of two different ways of structuring these cues. One is what we'll call a pooled queue. So this is a case where you have essentially a single line um, where the patients are waiting to be seen by one of the many physicians who are working there. They're not pre-assigned to a particular physician's queue. Um, the other kind of queue structure that we consider is a dedicated queue. And this dedicated queue is essentially as soon as they arrive and get registered, they're getting assigned to a specific physician's dedicated queue, right? So from the beginning, you're waiting in the line that belongs to a particular physician. So ultimately, we're asking, given these type, type two types of um, queue structures, which one of these might lead to more efficient or productive outcomes? Which is a good question for any of us who've ever been in line at the ER. Exactly. You know, it can be a very frustrating experience. So when you looked at these two types of cues, what, did, what were your key takeaways? What did you find? Sure. So um, what we find mm -hmm. is, surprisingly, because this is actually counter to what traditional queuing theory would predict, we find that having the dedicated cues actually led to faster throughput time. So in this case, shorter lengths of stays and shorter waiting times for the patients. Um, we found this to be interesting because, like I said, it's counterintuitive in a way. And what we're finding is that it's it's not just that, you know, with pooled cues, you are able to buffer against the variability that you might see in these kinds of cues. But in this case, with the dedicated cues, given that the physicians are people who, they're people, first of all, and they have a lot of discretion in terms of how they organize their work, when they have these dedicated cues, they start feeling a greater sense of ownership and responsibility over those cues um, of patients in this case. And they're trying to actively think of ways to get people into the beds quicker, which means that they have to think about how can I get the patients who are in the beds out faster. So they're doing things differently, like pulling for the test results. If they ordered tests, they're proactively, you know, calling up to see what kinds, of, you know, what are the results, um, rather than just waiting for those results to be pushed to them. And we can validate a lot of these hypotheses that we generated from our interviews and observations with the physicians through the data that we collect from the electronic medical records um, of the particular emergency department that we worked with for this project. So looking at some of the practical implications of this research, I guess if I'm an emergency department, how could I, I mean, it seems like this is indicating that I would want to implement this sort of cue. And I guess, first of all, is that in fact the case? And if it is, I guess, how would I go about doing that? I mean, are there things you would say, how do hospitals take this and really apply it? Sure. So that's a great question. And since this paper, we've actually spoken with different emergency departments that have started implementing this. Because let me just backtrack just a little bit and say a little more about our findings and why it was so significant. Um, we find that, you know, this change that I told you about the reduction in the length of stay and the reduction in the waiting times, they're actually quite significant. So we're finding a 17% decrease in the length of stay of the patients and a 9% decrease in the waiting times. When you translate that into numbers, minutes for an average patient who's coming to this particular ED, that's about a 40, 45 minute reduction in that total time. So that's huge. And if you think about um, given the fact that there are about 200 patients who are showing up to this emergency department per day, 
that's a large amount of time if you add that up for all 200, such that they're able to see about 30 more patients per day with the same amount of resources. That's exactly why, practically speaking, these other emergency departments that tend to have pooled queuing systems, most um, EDs or emergency departments in the US still have pooled queuing systems. That's why they're so interested in thinking about, oh, how can we make this transition to a dedicated queuing system, given that that might mean that we're able to see much more in terms of kind of a patient load per day without adding more resources. So the kinds of things that they're doing differently. So a lot of times, um, so this will differ by emergency department. So each place we speak with is slightly different. But in this case, you can think of, you know, if there's a computer assignment system in terms of how you assign patients to physicians, you can um, make that assignment happen just essentially at the beginning of when they get registered rather than uh, when they get into a bed. Uh, typically what is done with these pooled queuing systems is that they wait until the patient has an available bed to get into to assign the physician. So in the again, in the waiting room, they're really waiting in this pooled queue. And when we think even beyond emergency departments, thinking about how might we apply these kinds of things, it's very much a case-by-case -case basis. But what I would say is the key um, thing to think about is, you know, are these workers, in this case it was physicians, but in other cases it could be all sorts of other service sector workers, are they people who have have lots of discretion over how they work. If they don't, I, I would say pooled queues are still probably more efficient, but if they have that capacity to really change the way they structure their workflow um, and use their discretion to make those real-time decisions, you might start thinking about these dedicated queues as a way to try to um, improve productivity and efficiency in ways you wouldn't have thought of before. Because it sounds like one of the keys here is that not only are you switching the way you do the queue, but you're also the the doctors know, is that they have, they're given ownership over this list of people. Right. And so instead of just waiting what comes next, they see what's right. next right. and how what they can think about what they can do about it. That's a really interesting point you mentioned about seeing it. There's actually a separate study, not mine, um, that's uh, recently come out. And I've seen it in the press, actually, mm -hmm. even just yesterday in the New York Times. Um, where having visibility into the length of your queue is really important. So if you design this queue where the physicians in this case might not actually be able to see how many patients are waiting in their queue, it might not actually make much of a difference because what's important is you know you can actually see, oh wow, I've got 12 patients waiting for me. Like I, I should really get to them. Um, they belong to me. If you don't have that kind of information, maybe it won't change your behavior. Now, what's next for this research, or what are you going to? What are you studying next? Yeah, sure. So, um, most directly related to this project. So, with any kind of operations management question, it's really important to think about trade-offs um, and thinking about the boundary conditions. So, with this particular paper, we looked at things like quality um, of care and what what it means for utilization, those kinds of things. But I want to take it a step further and think about um, less so in an empirical setting like this paper was, but more so in kind of a gen more generalizable modeling setting. So I'm working with some other colleagues um, writing a modeling paper trying to see what are the conditions under which this might be the case where dedicated queues outperform pooled queues given different types of work aversion that you know servers might have. So we consider things like whether they're averse to having high levels of workload or just having or, or just being busy at all and then they would prefer idle time. So we're trying to understand what is the threshold or what are the conditions under which this would be the case. So that's most um, um, directly related to this particular queuing paper. Um, but more broadly, I'm very interested in thinking about different levers that we might be able to um, use to try to think about ways to improve efficiency and productivity in these healthcare settings, not just the emergency department, but also thinking about inpatient settings or outpatient settings more broadly. So um, I've been looking into things like different ways of um, leveraging performance feedback that you might provide to physicians, um, different ways we might thinking about matching the supply and demand of hospital beds, because there are all sorts of different patients who show up and different types of beds that are available at different times. And especially given the enormous amount of data that are being collected these days electronically um, in hospital settings, how can we better leverage that to make predictions that we can act on in real time? So those are the kinds of things I've been really interested in. Great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.